Thank you for watching this presentation. If you are enjoying our programming, please give us your feedback at DoveBroadcasting.com or WGGS16.com. And be sure to connect with us on Facebook. Just search for WGGS TV. Thanks again for watching Dove Broadcasting, your home for something clean in the air. and welcome to Nightline. Uh, there's not many times that I come and sit in this particular seat when I'm not reminded by the Lord of that passage of Scripture out of the book of Psalm uh, 118, verse 24, where the psalmist said, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And uh, the New Testament a uh, companion verse to that verse is our scripture for this evening where the Word of God says in Philippians 4, verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Sometimes rejoicing just comes as an overflow from the blessings of God that have been manifested in our lives. And then sometimes the manifestations are not so strong and they're not so powerful and uh, the blessings of God are not as visible and tangible. What do you do on those days? Do you just say, well, I'm not going to rejoice? Absolutely not. You don't say that, but you make a choice to rejoice simply because you have heard the voice of God. The audible voice of God? Not necessarily so. But that still small voice of the Lord that has spoken to your heart and said, I am with you and I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm so glad and so very thankful that you have tuned in to this another edition of Nightline. This is going to be a very special program. We have as our guest this evening, Bruce and Connie Viverberg. They're authors of Heavenly Dreams and Visions. You're going to be blessed, I really do believe, by what they've got to say and what they've got to share. Also, we'll have in a little while Chloe Kiavachi. Uh, she is with Redeeming Grace Music Ministry. And she's going to share about an upcoming gospel celebration event at the Skyland Baptist Church in Arden, North Carolina. So going to be a lot of good things going on throughout this entire program. If you've got a burden, if you've got a blessing, you've got a prayer request or a praise report, you will not want to miss an opportunity to speak with one of our sensitive, sympathetic, empathetic, but more than anything, spirit-filled prayer counselors who is waiting for your call. So, Get ready to be blessed by the presence of the Lord. Get ready to be impressed with the presence of the Lord. We've got Antrina Miller who's going to start the program off this evening by simply singing more. You are awesome, you 
Well, thank you so much, and Trina Moore. And, uh, well, really, her name is Antrina Miller. I was thinking about we're going to be able to hear more of Antrina Miller. Now, she's probably not going to sing more anymore, all right? But she is going to sing some more uh, music about Jesus, and you'll be blessed mm -hmm. by it, and you'll be impressed by it. Mm -hmm. And I praise the Lord for that. We're honored to have on the program this particular evening uh, some folks that I have never had the privilege to meet before, and that is uh, the Viverbergs, the Viverbergs. And we praise the Lord that Bruce and Connie are here. Thank you. Uh, all the way from, uh, from Indiana down to Florida. And then halfway back, that's right. And now you've Good. landed in the in the Gatlinburg area. That's right. Praise the Lord. Just tell me, first of all, Bruce, how did you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Although we were madly in love, yeah. and just gotten married, uh, there was an emptiness in our heart. Right. And uh, I was out on uh, between appointments one time, living in Indiana. And I stopped at a, a bookstore and somehow ran across a, a coloring book Bible. <laughs> Had never read a Bible in my life. I was almost 30. Were, 20, you, a sal maybe, were you a salesman? Uh, in the insurance business. Started out as a teacher. Yeah. Um, 
and I ran across a coloring book Bible and I bought it and we took it home I took it home and we found ourselves uh, fighting over reading the Bible yeah. reading coloring book. Yeah. and we found ourselves consumed with it and then we uh, our next door neighbor went to a certain church and he asked us to go to church and uh, uh, that Bible uh, made us hungry for the Word of God and and so we both received the, the Lord and uh, that's how it all began. Boy, I tell you, I, I hear that, Bruce, and, and it's kind of convicting yeah. for me because I, I just sat here and, and we were talking before you came on the air about, about our love for Bibles and, yeah. And, yeah. and all the Bibles that we have and collect yeah. and so on and so forth, yeah. and I commented on your Bible. And there's a lot of folks who are watching this program right now yeah. They've probably got 25 or 30 Bibles yeah. in their house, but here's yeah. somebody, an yeah. adult, yeah. Uh, an adult professional yeah. who didn't have a Bible, bought yeah. a coloring book Bible, yeah. Yeah. and God used that yeah. to bring you to Christ. You, you know, you can be uh, relatively successful, you can be wonderfully happy in your marriage, and everything looks good on the outside, and, uh, but without the Lord, there's a void there. And until you fill that void, until you find out who the filler of that void is, yeah. Uh, you're always going to be empty all your life. And we we're just fortunate that uh, the Lord had surrounded us, us with enough people to uh, find Him uh, before we got too far away from Him. Yeah. Amen. And so yeah. we're grateful. Amen. We're grateful. Connie, what did you think about that day when, when your, your newlywed husband came home with, with a coloring book Bible? Well, it was, uh, it was exciting. And I uh, couldn't figure out why he bought that. Well, he couldn't figure out why he bought it either. But once we opened it, and once we started reading the little captions, the little stories about Moses and about Jesus, um, well, we, were, we, we became more hungry. And uh, it, it was just an exciting, exciting time to know that, uh, or to perceive that God was drawing us to himself. Right. And um, yeah, it was an exciting time. Well, after, after God did draw you to Himself, and, yeah. and you were born again, both of mm -hmm. you, was there a, a, a significant time and place where it seemed like uh, you just really began to grow? Mm -hmm. Well, if I could say, yeah. um, you know, we still, you know, we used to watch the Billy Graham um, Crusade. The crusades he had, yeah. and of course that works to draw you. Yeah. And I was out and happened to be in a bookstore, and I picked up How to Discover the Holy Spirit by Billy Graham. Don't know why I bought it. I had never bought a, a, a religious book before. I threw it in the back seat of my car, and forgot it but all about it for about two months until there was a snowstorm. Yeah. Got locked in the house. You know the city was closed down, and I remembered that book. And so I went to the car and got it, settled down in my chair, started reading the book. And on, you know, before I finished the, the first chapter, I had a vision of Jesus on the cross. And it was uh, life changing. All the burdens and the cares and the fears and the apprehensions and the emptiness that was in my heart when I saw Jesus hanging on the cross. When I looked up and saw his face and saw that he had died. Um, and then when the vision was over, um, you know, there was just che tears rolling down my eyes. Yeah. And, of course, I received him as Savior, and all I could say was, he's alive. Jesus is alive. And I, I got up out of the chair, and I ran through the house, and I found Bruce, and I said, oh, my gosh, Bruce, he's alive. And, you know, Bruce is, you know, okay. <laughs> and uh, it, I said, you have to have this vision. It, you know, when you're biblically illiterate, Right. Uh, you know, I just thought that that's what everybody had when they got saved, you know, was a vision of Jesus on the cross. And then they just sort of knew they were saved. Were she dressed um, up in the, the it, garb of the day? In, in that vision, it was like I was transported back into that, that time period. And I had the, the garb, the dress on that those women wore in the, those days. And, you know, the, um, the hood, the hood and, and just looked up at the, at the cross and there he was. And it was such a beautiful, beautiful, amazing sight to see him. And as a child, you know, personally, um, you know, I always prayed uh, to God. I always believed in God, the, right. the Father God. But right. Jesus, uh, you know, I was a little, you know, leery about, you know, who he really was. Well, you know, he's who he says he is. He's, he's God. He's all, he was all man. He's all God. 
and uh, I'm just thankful to have him as my savior. And and um, well, I I know that you are, and 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 I bear witness with that gratitude that both yeah. of you have that that you are thankful for Jesus. In just a moment, I want to talk about speaking of visions. Uh, there's a book that I have right here in front of me that uh, has has your names mm -hmm. on it, entitled Heavenly Dreams and Visions. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I want to talk about that, but before we do, I just want to say it's interesting to me that, that that seems to be the way, the foundation, the bedrock, so to speak, the cornerstone of your whole Christian experience. Yeah. You had a vision of yeah. Christ Jesus mm -hmm. hanging on the cross and who on this planet mm -hmm. could, could argue the validity of, of a vision of Christ dying on the cross, mm -hmm. because without the cross, yeah, exactly, I mean, there's there's nothing yeah. for us by way of hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fact, as you said to Bruce, he he's alive. How did you come from that vision at at your at your spiritual infancy mm -hmm. to this vision? Mm -hmm. It's been thirty years of experiences and visions and, and dreams. Right. 30 years of, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, being in a church at that time, you know, uh, we took the visions, the vision that I had, right. and there was a, a couple other visions after that, and not realizing and understanding what, what was going on in our lives, um, we took it to the leadership in the church. And of course, back then, they knew about them, but not as, it wasn't as prevalent as it is today in the church. Right. And um, so they couldn't really help us, but so we began to do a search in the Bible. What, what did the Bible say about dreams and visions? Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you know, Bruce, you want to start at Genesis? Yeah, you know, sometimes and, when you can't get help from somebody else, you've got to dig into it. Yes. Right. And so that's what we had to do is dig into it. And we know God is sovereign. Sure. And so when he, when he decides to give a dream, or first of all, from started in Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation, God gave visions and dreams to people when he chose to give dreams. Started out in the 15th chapter of uh, Genesis, right off the bat, he gave Abram, Abraham, name was Abram at the time, right. a, a vision, he said, you'll be the father of many nations. Right. At that time, he was a seven, about a 75 year old man and had no kids at all. And he gave Abraham a promise. Uh, of course, most of us, when we get a promise from the Lord, we think it's going to happen next week, next month, maybe next year. But Abraham waited about 25 years before that dream came to fruition. And then he finally, they finally had the child. And then God didn't wait too much longer. In the, the end of chapter 15, 15 of Genesis, he gives Abraham his first dream. Right. And truth of the matter is, his first dream was a nightmare. Mm. Mm. Most of us would say, First of all, what did I have for dinner last night? What, was it, what did I eat? Or if it's a bad dream, oh, that's either got to be of the devil or, or something bad. But God showed Abraham that his descendants were going to go into captivity for, right. for 400 years. Right. And it, it was an ominous and it was a fearful dream. And so we need to learn that when, first of all, God speaks and he speaks whatever he wants to speak. He speaks to who he wants to speak and he speaks when he wants to speak. Amen. That's why we call him Lord. Amen. And so, so obviously not all dreams, not all visions are from the Lord. Sometimes dreams are just out of our natural soul. But he does give them and he decides what he wants to say and when he wants to say it. And so we, we've learned, Paul said in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, the, the apostle Paul, that right. we all see through a glass darkly. Right. All see through a glass right. darkly all see through glass darkly. When we're talking about spiritual things, nobody's got the whole ball of wax because we see through a glass darkly. And I find that scripture to be real interesting that that's in the love chapter, the 13th yeah. chapter of yeah. 1 Corinthians, until I realized that what greater way to learn how to walk in love is to realize that we don't know everything. Amen. You know, what, Amen. what a great way to develop a relationship with other people when you realize that you don't know everything. Praise the Lord. And the greatest of us don't know everything, even though a lot of us maybe have a tendency to think we know a lot. Even know-it-alls yeah. don't know don't it all. Don't know it all, yeah. That's that chapter that, that all these sweet young couples want me to read at their weddings. Yes. 
but uh, we usually don't don't go that far with it. But yeah. but I promise mm -hmm. you, from henceforth, I, yeah. I will go that far. I yeah. want to ask you this question: What's the difference between a vision and a dream? Mm -hmm. A dream, you know, they're interchangeable words. And the dr the dream that you have is when you're asleep. The vision that you have can be while you're awake, you know, uh, uh, an image or a picture story flashes up on the screen of your heart and your spirit man sees it while yeah. you're awake. Yeah. And God is trying to say something through that vision. And if you, if you happen to be sensitive to the spirit and you see that image, it can be a symbol of something. That, and, and through that symbol, he's, he's communicating a message to you. Um, uh, you know, I was talking on the on the way here, you know, we, we had rented a car to drive here. Mm -hmm. And we said, now, where's the fan? Where's the fan on that dashboard? Mm -hmm. You know, let's turn the fan up. It's hot here. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm looking around and there's a uh, there's an image, there's a symbol of a fan. Yeah. But if you don't know what that symbol means, you're not going to know how to benefit from the fan because you touch the, the symbol of the fan and the fan starts blowing. And it's a lot like that in visions, you know, a lot of dreams at night will be symbolic as well as symbol, uh, as well as visions. You're going to get symbols in there. Yeah. And uh, if you don't know how to uh, interpret the language of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to miss what God has uh, in the message. But now some people dream at night and they wake up and right away they know what, what, the, what the dream meant. Right. You know, but other people, you know, they can dream and, and wake up and remember the dream and then pray and ask God what the interpretation of that dream is. And that draws you into a relationship with Him that uh, gets you closer with Him. Some people get inordinately um, hungry to get an interpretation of a dream from somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's okay when you're first learning. It's important to have a, a prayer partner or somebody that uh, has experience in hearing God's uh, voice speak to them through dreams. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, really, God wants a relationship with you. He mm -hmm. wants to reveal to you what He's saying because mm -hmm. dreams are so personal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, He's going to talk to you about what's relevant in your daily life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're praying about something, uh, you know, God has a multitude of ways that He speaks to His people. Mm -hmm. Dreams and visions are just two of the ways. Mm -hmm. And right. we're here to give that message mm -hmm. and how that. you can hear Him through dreams and visions. Mm -hmm. When we come back in just a moment after, after another song, I, I want to ask this question. The Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is the Bible still necessary? Don't oh answer. I, I, I know <laughs> you're ready for that. I know you're ready for that. And I, and I, and I got a good idea what your yeah. answer is going to be because I've seen your Bible. Yeah. It's worn out. Yeah. And I say that respectfully. But is the Bible necessary? Still, do we still need the Bible today? Is it, mm -hmm. is it relevant? There, there was an old preacher back many, many years ago uh, who came from from these Carolina mountains. Mm -hmm. His name was Vance Havner. Mm -hmm. He said, God doesn't have any favorites, mm -hmm. but he does have some intimates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And that's what you're talking that's, about. That's, that's very good. And and, an excellent question. An intimacy with God. We, yeah. we want to answer that question. Uh, let it be known that her name is Antrina Miller. Not more. She's saying more. And she's come back to sing more, but her name is Antrina Miller, and she's going to sing a beautiful song entitled Great and Mighty. Amen. Great and 
I just wish that uh, there there were some way, and I'm probably not going to be that guy who invents it uh, unless God just shocks us all. I just wish that there were some way that, that you could enjoy the music and the singing and, and it be on the air at the same time 
that we're still on the air over here. I, I think that's A D D D or something like that. I don't even remember all of the the letters. But man alive, we have we have just simply continued on uh, discussing dreams and visions. Now I know what some of y'all are thinking. Mm -hmm. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> you're you're thinking uh, this is this is a little this is a little. Uh, Star Trekish Christianity. This is a little far out, if you would. But friends, I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing far out about God communicating with His children. Amen. Nothing whatsoever. And uh, before we went to that song, I asked Bruce and Connie, what role does the Bible play today as far as dreams and visions are concerned. What what would you say if somebody stood up in a service and said, God God gave me this dream that that uh, that giving is no longer going to be a part of the church or, or something mm -hmm. like that. Well you, before the break you said is the Bible still relevant. Yeah. And you asked what we thought about that. The first thing personally, what I do every single day before I start my Bible reading is as I read a proverb. Today is the tenth so I read Proverbs 10. Yeah. Then I go to the Psalms. And since today is the 10th, I read Psalm 10, Psalm 40, Psalm 70, Psalm 100, and Psalm 130. 30 days in a month. And then I start my Bible reading after I do that. Right. Obviously, Proverbs is the wisdom of God. And so you can't get enough of that. And it's, it's, it's extremely relevant. You, you open up the Proverbs and it'll it'll invariably speak to something in your life that's going on today. And so that's what I do. So today when I got up the first thing, I read Proverbs 10, and then I went to the Psalms, and then I read whatever I'm going to read. And I know, uh, go ahead. It's relevant, it's relevant. And if somebody has a dream and God tells them to do something they think that doesn't line up with the Bible, well, you know, that's not God speaking to you in your Agreed. dream. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if something, if it doesn't line up, you know, the Bible is the plumb line of every revelation Amen. you get. Amen. Amen. You know, if you're not walking with God and you have dreams and you perceive that maybe it's from the Lord, you better go take it to a spiritual leader mm -hmm. or somebody that's familiar with the Bible, you know, a, a Christian who, who is mm -hmm. familiar with the Bible and let them help you and lead you through the understanding of that dream. That's you know, good counsel. It should always line up with the Bible, always. And, uh, you know, it's just like when I had the vision of Jesus on the cross and I knew he, he was the Savior and I received him as my Savior. Right. That lines up and validates the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the way it is with any dream or any vision. You know, we were talking about uh, earlier today about, well, why do we need the scriptures? Or why do we need dreams? You know, why does right. God speak? through dreams. Well, if you're praying, well, where to send my son to college or, or where should we be moving? Yes or no? Well, God can reveal that in a dream. Right. And, and he may not be able to do that so specifically in the Bible, through the Bible reading. Uh, can you, you know, can, you know yes. there, there's no end to this story, but uh, if a person, when a person has a spiritual experience, a dream or a vision or whatever, it's always good to take it to your pastor or someone who's mature in the faith and get their counsel. Well However, in the end, yeah. that dream and that or that vision is between you and the Lord because he's talking to you. I guarantee you if Joseph would have taken his dream about going ahead and marrying Mary to his friends who all thought Mary was guilty of adultery, they would have told him not to marry, uh, told him not to marry Mary. But he heard from the Lord and so it didn't matter who he took that dream to, the, he got the, the answer. He got the answer it. from the Lord. So although it's good to talk to someone with counsel, the final answer has got to be between you and the Lord. That's why you've got to have a living, breathing, growing relationship with Him. I'm going to take a long story and make it real short, just skip a whole lot of details that, uh, that really don't matter. Mm -hmm. But in one of the first churches that I pastored, I, I was in my early 20s, mm -hmm. dealing with some issues, mm -hmm. didn't think anybody knew, but there was an old gentleman that lived up the street on this mill village, came to my house, and, and, and I, I say this so respectfully, 
he, uh, as far as reading was concerned, he couldn't read, mm -hmm. couldn't even write his own name. Mm -hmm. But he said, Pastor, he said, you may think I'm crazy. He said, but God gave me a dream mm -hmm. <laughs> and told me that you were depressed. Yeah, yeah. And told me to come tell you everything was going to be all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that was in a Baptist church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, God's bigger than our denominations. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. He, he's bigger than our imaginations. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Joe, Prophet Joel and Peter talked about the last day's outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And two of the things he said was, uh, your uh, old men are going to dream dreams, your young men are going to dream vi uh, see visions. Right. And uh, this is not for the spiritual superstar. There you go. It, it's for the body of Christ to learn, to hear from their God, like we talked in the break, if you would talk to most Christians who love God and you get down talking to, the intim to them in intimately, mm -hmm. they would confess to you that, yeah, the pastor probably hears from a God, but frankly, I don't ever hear from God. If Bill Gates, one of the richest people in the world, said to you, I'm going to give you five ways to be as successful as I am. Right. If I'm making thirty or forty thousand dollars a year, and I hear Bill Gates give these five ways, and I say, Bill, I think that's real good information, but these last two, I don't really like. <laughs> Bill's not going to hang around, and you're not very smart, right? Because uh, he's giving you some invaluable information, right? We can hear from God number one through the Word of God. That's it. Which is number one. We can the still small voice number two. Right. Situations and circumstances number three. Godly people, number four, dreams and visions, five and six. Now, if we want to leave out four, two out of six, fine, but you're going to leave out some of the, uh, some of the ingredients in the cake. So, yes. You know, God never says anything that's not important. Right. He, he's not a blabbermouth. But we've found that most of the time that he talks to us, it would be totally insignificant to you because it's personal to us. That's it. Okay. People say, how do you know a dream is from the Lord? First of all, there's no cut and dry way, but if I could explain it this way. If your son John calls you on the telephone, you pick up the phone and you say, hello. And John says, hey. You say, hey, John, how are you doing? I'm glad you called. You know right away, it's John. You've had lots of conversations with him on the phone. John calls me on the phone. He says, hey. And I say, hey, back at you. Who's this? <laughs> And he'd say, John. And then I'd say, well, John, John who? And then he'd say, John, his last name. And then I'd, I'd recognize who he was. But if John calls me enough times on the phone, I begin to recognize, it'll get to a point in time where John can say, hey. And I can say, hey, John, how you doing? I'm glad you called. So hearing from God is a practice, and we get better at it and better at it and better at it. But we never, ever get to the point that we don't miss it. Some people get afraid of missing it. They get afraid of the things of God. But a hunter uses that favorite gun of his, and that gun that he goes out to kill deer or kill rabbits or whatever, right. if used wrongly, that gun can hurt him. Right. And you've got that chef or that cook who's got that favorite knife that's sharp as can be, and it cuts those carrots or cuts that meat wonderfully. If you are you reckless with that knife, uh, that knife can cut you badly. And it's like that with the things of God. Uh, you handle it not with fear, but with reverence, reverence and carefully. Yeah. Uh, you don't handle it flaky. You just you handle it with all the respect it, it warrants. And so that's how we handle the things of God. We, if I have a dream, Connie has a dream, has a vision, we go and we talk about it together. Right. We talk, oftentimes when you have a dream, it seems, when you, first of all, when we uh, wake up, we write it down because a dream can go away in a hurry. What did the Lord tell Habakkuk? Write the vision. Yes, yeah. he did. Make yeah. it plain. Yeah. yeah. Because it can go away in five minutes. Usually my dreams happen early in the morning, and so when I wake up, it's, it's pretty fresh. But the first thing Connie and I do is, is we talk about it. And we, a, a dream from the Lord, it will have a certain aroma on it that it, a natural dream won't have. And you start to perceive that God's trying to say something. And then when you write it down and you start to talk about it, and then it starts to get clearer and clearer. And then you see a little glimpse, a little glimpse, a little glimpse of maybe what 
the Lord's trying to say to you. And then it, there's nothing like, I remember when my sister, my sister was two years older than I, a Christian a lady and her husband, they went to a Presbyterian church. She never heard of a dream or a vision in her life she, and, and frankly didn't much ever read the Bible. But they'd come and visit us from uh, up north and we, we'd tell them about dreams and visions because that's our lane right now. Right. And uh, we, I don't know if they rolled their eyes or whatever and uh, whatever, but they'd go home. And I, but I remember one day she called and she was excited as can be. Never seen her that excited. And they had just had, each had a dream and it, it clicked in that that dream was from the Lord and that God was speaking to them about a dream. And so then we were able to mentor them some about what he may be saying to them. Because we, we, if you want to play a good golf game, right. the last thing you ever want to do is play with a lousy golfer. Because you'll start to, you see a, a golfer hit a, a lousy golfer hit a slice into the trees, it, invariably you'll not have a good, if you want to have a good golf game, uh, you, you want to play with a golfer that's better than you. That just works for some reason. And uh, so you want to surround yourself with people who know more than you do about a certain subject. My dad was a, growing up was a family doctor, GP they called him right, back then. Right, right. Did house calls. I remember he used to get paid $7.50 for a house call. You, uh, but, and my dad would uh, take care of people with their maladies or things, but you wouldn't want him to be act as an orthopedic surgeon. That was out of his lane. Right. Okay, so everybody's got their skills. Everybody's got their abilities. Indeed. And so you've got to search out people that have, and God will bring them to you. God will bring them to you. But then you've got to be humble enough to hear what people have to say. So surrounding yourself with good people that are more mature with you than you with certain, in certain areas is invaluable. Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. Um, I am blown away. I am blown away. And uh, there's no way that I can even begin to say what God's doing in my own life and speaking to my own heart mm -hmm. through, through what mm -hmm. has been said here for the past few minutes. Will you hang around just yes. a little bit longer? Yeah. We're going to go back to Antrina Miller. She's going to sing about grace. And then by the grace of God, we're going to come back and talk just a little bit more about dreams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, 
Jesus it saved me Hallelujah. and it raised me it covers me and it heals me it's unmerited favor it's God's mercy overflowing I'm grateful for I'm grateful for Oh, where would I be Without your amazing grace Where would I be Without your tender mercies I see Praise the Lord. That is Antrina Miller, a seventh grade math teacher from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, I don't think that I, that I ever had a, a math teacher that could sing like that, I'm telling you. In fact, uh, if I did, I, I probably was such a, a poor student that they wanted to do everything except sing. Yeah. But to God be the glory. Uh, his hand is on and Trina Miller, and we look forward to hearing more for her this evening. We're getting ready to wrap up this first fast hour of mm -hmm. Nightline. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has been my great privilege and pleasure to spend some time with Connie and Bruce Viverberg. Right. How could our brothers and sisters, our friends and our neighbors, pick this book up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want more information, you can go to our website. It's uh, www.heavenlydreamsandvisions, uh, or uh, the book is available on, on Amazon, Amazon.com. Absolutely, absolutely, and I, and I know folks will want to do that. What would you say maybe to that, that late 50s, early 60-something-year-old individual I'm, t I'm talking about a believer, a child of God, who many, many years ago had a God-given dream to one day, and we'll just say blank, that's between them and God. But uh, they, they, started, they started hanging around whiners instead of winners. They, they started looking at the glass half empty instead of half full. They started looking at the problem instead of the solution. And then over a period of years, uh, they more or less just, just buried, buried that dream. What would you say to them now? Because they don't want to, they don't want to go out like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that? I, I, what I'd say, I, I, all I could say is what I would do. I would what ask, would you do? I would ask, I'd say, Lord, in, in my heart, this dream is dead. Uh, and would you please resurrect this dream? And then I would, I would fill myself with the Word of God and surround myself with Christian people and believe God to do it. And uh, uh, I, believe he, I believe we will. Well, our heart's desire is for people, average Christian people, to know that this isn't just for the special Christian. Amen. There's a great golfer named Phil Mickelson. Love him. He'll be in the Hall of Fame. He's quoted as saying... I used to dream about playing golf before I could even walk. That's about one years old. And he wasn't talking about dream about, think about. He was talking about literally dream about playing. So he had some God-given dreams about playing golf professionally before he got to be one years old. 
Brett, Brett Baer, who we all, we all maybe know from Fox News, yeah. he's pretty high profile. About seven years ago, they had a, had a son, but this son was born with a terrible heart deformity, uh, uh, infirmity. It didn't think he would live. And Brett and his wife, Amy, would say that they were, at that time, nominal Christians, nominal Catholics. Right. And so they were in the hospital, and this baby had to have a terrible surgery, a very dangerous surgery when, it, when he was 10 years old. And they started talking to the priest there at the hospital, and the priest came in, and uh, before the baby had the operation, they all held hands and they prayed for this baby. Mm -hmm. And Amy, as a nominal Catholic, said she had a vision of lights, beams, of, beams light. of light down on this baby's crib or whatever the whatever they sleep in in the hospital. Right. And a peace came into heart, her heart and they knew at that moment that God had his hand on that little baby. Now that baby's had to have a couple more surgeries but now he's about seven years old and pretty healthy and, and doing fine just like a growing kitty plays sports. But the point of it is uh, they were nominal. They were nominal mm. Catholics at the time, and today they're on fire cop, uh, Catholics, and they talk about it on Fox News with their testimony and written a book about the healing heart or the God's giving heart or something like that. It can Bring, transform your life. Bringing glory to God. It's, it's transformed their life, one little short vision that God chose to give to Amy. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. That, that's powerful. Bruce and Connie, we, we have a, a testimony that has been called in, and I especially appreciate this. Appreciate all of the testimonies and prayer request, praise report, and when we say that we pray for these, we really do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got better things to do than to lie to you, okay? Yeah. In the name of Jesus, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, and if I can help it, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. But a lady has called in and said, five years ago was in the hospital. Doctors gave up on her. God gave, this lady's name Jenny, God gave Jenny a vision, and he healed her. Mm. She is 90 years young mm. to the glory of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then there's others who have called it. I'm glad God's still alive Amen. and he's still yeah. real yeah. even in Amen. this day and time. Mm -hmm. Connie, what would you say as we wrap it up here? Mm. I would say there's nothing like prayer. God loves his people and he loves to hear your voice. He loves to answer prayer. And if you're away from God, I would suggest to get down on your knees and take your husband's hand or your wife's hands and get down and, and kneel before God right. and be reverent before Him and cry out to Him and ask Him, you know, what is it that you want me to do in my life? And He'll answer those Certainly. prayers. Guide me, direct me, heal me, whatever it is. He's a deliverer. He's a healer. Get close to God through prayer and, and reading His Word. Amen. Amen. What would you say, Bruce? We'd all love to hear the story from the Apostle Peter or the Apostle James or John about that resurrection day where Jesus was raised from the dead. But if you really want to get the inside story, you need to talk to the ladies. Hmm. The Lord, through His sovereign will, chose to not to talk to Peter, James, and John, but decided right. to talk to the ladies. And uh, uh, sometimes ladies, oftentimes ladies, in spiritual things are ahead of us gentlemen. And God used the ladies there to start telling the world about Jesus. He used uh, 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 Priscilla and Aquila, yeah. uh, Aquila being the man, Priscilla being the woman, and he, he called both of them servants of the Lord and fellow laborers. And so we, we don't ever want to leave the ladies out, and they're not second place uh, uh, at all at all. And I think in, sometimes in the church world, we have a tendency to uh, listen to the men and not so much listen to the women. Uh, but if you're talking to Connie and I, I'd suggest you listen to her every bit as much yeah. as you listen to me. That's well, amen. Uh, hey, yeah. sweet. Amen. Amen. I think that's a real good practice because women are very sensitive to the Spirit of God. And God's, God's given them that, yeah. a spirit-filled woman. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. For that, I, I was just thinking while you were saying that a, a lot of a lot of the men that I've pastored, not all of them, but a lot of them, are spiritually sound asleep. Yeah. Mm. And a lot of times, it's the women yeah. who right. are, who are awake yeah. with visions for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To Amen. God be the glory. Amen. 
Thank I believe, you. I believe that the Lord's going to do great things through women in the last days. Amen. 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 Um, 10,000 times over, thank you so much thank you, sir. Thank for you. coming down thank from you. Gatlinburg yeah, this evening and spending time and uh, encouraging us to continue dreaming. As we go off the air, we're going to pray for these requests. And you'll be back for the next segment of Nightlife. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for my brother and sister in Christ. I thank you, Lord, for, for your grace that made it possible that I could be here tonight to listen and to learn. Because if I'd been home, I may not have even watched. I, I probably would have went walking or been out in the yard or something like that. But you meant for me to hear this, and I have been edified. 